Good morning. How is everyone this morning? It's so good to see you. I hope that you had a good night's sleep and that you are feeling well. You are feeling well rested and good this morning. The Lord wants us to rest well. Did you know that? The Lord wants us to rest well. And so I want to say welcome to you this morning. Uh, welcome to Real Talk Inspiration. I am Valerie Oliver, uh, pastor of First Liberty Baptist Church of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And um, I'm going to tell you, though, that we are not your traditional Baptist church. We are not your typical Baptist church. We are all inclusive. We welcome all. We want all to know that uh, we are not concerned about your gender expression, your um, affections, who you love, who you marry, um, where you're from, your background, your denomination, Baptist, Catholic, Pentecostal, Methodist, none of that matters to us. We are all inclusive. And so come on and feel free to worship with us. We want to again welcome you to Real Talk Inspiration every Thursday morning at 7 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Amen. This is also Memorial Day weekend coming up. Want to remind you before I forget about it to be safe this weekend. Have fun, but be safe. Amen. And so uh, we're going to go on into prayer because we are to always pray. So we are going to pray and then we're going to come back and jump right into the lesson. The Lord has a word for you this morning. And so if you will, if you like, share this video, uh, share it, um, save it. You know, um, you know, just enjoy it and share it with people you care about. And so we're going to pray. I want you to give everything that burdens you to the Lord. The Lord said, cast all of your burdens upon me, for I care for you. And so you don't have to carry those burdens. You don't have to worry. You don't have to walk around being afraid or uh, heavy, heavy laden with these worries of the world. Just give them to the Lord. Amen. And so come on and pray with me. I want to remind you that while I'm praying, you can be praying in your heart as well. The Lord is powerful enough to hear your prayers and mine at the same time. Individually, specifically, with every detail. Yes. God doesn't miss anything. And so all of us can pray at the same time. Come on and pray with me. Let's go to the throne of God. Almighty Spirit, our Creator of the heavens and the earth and the universe, the seas and everything therein, our Maker, Dear God Almighty, we come this morning, first of all, to say thank you. We want to thank you for allowing us to still be here today. We have been through so much over the past year, and yet you have seen fit to allow us to see a brand new day. It's a day that we have not seen before and a day that we'll never see again. And so, Lord, we will carefully walk through this day with you, with you guiding us, walking with us, and talking with us, and listening to you, Lord, worshiping you, being a very prayer ourselves in our lives, and not just verbally, worshiping you in our walk and in our talk and everything we do. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. 
in spite of it all, we know that you are with us. We know that your hand is upon us. We know that whatever we go through in this life, you are with us. You never said we wouldn't go through anything. You never said we wouldn't have to go through the fire. But you did say you would never leave us nor forsake us. And so whatever is going on in our lives this morning, Lord, we know that you're with us. We want to pause, Lord, to ask your forgiveness for those things we have said and done that may not be pleasing in your sight. You said that we are to love one another and that love does no harm. And so, Lord, perhaps we have said or done something over the past week or whenever we've harmed someone verbally or, or in deed. And so, Lord, we ask your mercy and your forgiveness upon us. Help us to love one another as you said. Help us to be forgiven, but to still fight for what is right and to still stand up for justice and equality, but to not hold grudges in our hearts. It only harms us. It is then when we harm ourselves. And so, Lord, we ask that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can be better and do better. All of us can stand improvement somewhere in some area of our lives, no matter where we are in you. And no matter how much we have grown, we can all stand to continue to grow. And we thank you for reminding us of that. Help us, Lord. Let us be the bright lights that this world needs, this dark world. You said in your word that we are the light of the world. You said that we are the salt of the earth. Help us, Lord, to be just that. And now, Lord, we turn to you with our burdens. You told us to cast all of your burdens, our burdens, upon you because you care for us. You told us not to worry about anything but to pray about everything. And so, Lord, we're giving all of our cares, all of our concerns, all of our burdens, our fears, our worries, our anxieties. We're giving them all to you. And we thank you, Lord, for the privilege to come into your presence and to approach your throne of grace and make our request made known unto you. No other help we know. And so, we leave our burdens here. We leave them with you. It could be a sickness in the body. We know that you are still in the healing business. You are still in the healing business physically, mentally, and emotionally. You healed all kinds of diseases and all kinds of maladies and all kinds of infirmities, Lord, and you are still the same today. We give it to you and you ask, we ask you for your healing. We ask for your healing wherever we need it, in our minds, in our thoughts, in our bodies, in our emotions, even in our mental health, we ask for healing. And Lord, there may be a need for healing in a relationship or a marriage or a family relationship or some other relationship, a friendship, a co-worker relationship. We know that you can mend broken hearts and you can restore. And we ask you for your restoration power over these families right now, Lord, even in the name of Jesus right now. And whenever you're ready, if not now, and in your own way. And Lord, we ask your peace. Peace that passes all human understanding. 
for those who have lost loved ones, the families of those who were affected and others affected by the mass shooting in California on yesterday. Oh Lord, help us with this gun violence. Lord, help. Help us, Lord. Bless those families. Bless others who are grieving, those who have lost loved ones, Lord, who are still grieving from 9-11, way back in 2011. Still grieving the loss of their little babies, Lord. In Sandy Hook. Oh, God. Only you can comfort the way they need it. And so we ask for strength and comfort for these families and friends of all who were affected by the coronavirus and uh, all of these uh, issues that came with it. Lack of employment and financial issues and homelessness, evictions and all sorts of problems and issues. Lord. We, we ask that you would just intervene, Lord, and take care of these, your people. And Lord, we will always give you all the glory. And as we approach your word now, Lord, we ask that you would give us hearts of understanding. We ask that you would open our spiritual ears so that you can speak to our hearts and so that we can understand what it is you have for us this morning. We thank you, Lord, and we will always honor you and give you all the glory. We love you, and we thank you, and it is in the precious name of Jesus and all that is holy and righteous that we pray. Amen. Amen, beloved. God bless your hearts. Amen. God is not only a prayer hearing God, but God is also a prayer as me, God. Good morning, Miss Michelle, Shamela. Good morning to you all. It's so good to have you all join me this morning. My Facebook family, YouTube family, we at First Liberty Church, we love you. We love you. We love you to life. And we want you to always know that. Listen, beloved, I tell you what. When everything starts coming against you all at one time, get ready for a blessing. I just came right at you with it. Whenever everything comes at you, people come against you, circumstances come against you, issues come against you. Looks like everything starts happening at one time, beloved. Don't you know that there's a blessing right around the corner? Don't give up. There's a blessing on the way, beloved. And the devil is trying to distract you. The devil is trying to get your mind off of God and onto all the issues and all the problems and all the circumstances. The devil is trying to create worry and anxiety and fear in your heart. That's so that you can doubt God and stop trusting in the Lord. But beloved, I came to tell you this morning, keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes focused on God, not the problem, the problem solver. Keep your eyes focused on the Lord, beloved. And I just want to just tell you that, remind you for that, that this morning, beloved, because when you see everything coming at you from all different angles and all different ways and people bothering you for no reason, and trying to make you feel uh, bad and talking to you any kind of old way, beloved, just know that that ain't nothing but the devil trying to discourage you. Know one thing, I have learned this, that when I see the devil rear his ugly head, I know that there's a breakthrough right around the corner. I know there's a blessing right around the corner just for me. Amen. And beloved, you too. So if you are experiencing that or if you ever have, you know what I'm talking about. And if you ever do, you remember that. 
And beloved, similarly to what I just said, when you're when you're trying to do something in life, when you're trying to in, advance in life, and it looks like something happens and and takes you backwards, you take two steps forward, and then you take three backwards, uh, and and then beloved, are uh, you wondering what's going on, or you might be trying to build wealth or build your business, and it looks like people are trying to cut off your resources. Uh -huh. That's the devil. Uh huh. And you look like you're trying to repair your relationships and build uh, new relationships, and then people go to acting crazy. Uh, and, and, and beloved, you wonder what's going on. What is going on when everything you're trying to do uh, seems to be hindered by just the opposite? Everything you're trying to do, it looks like the opposite happens. Well, let me give you a hint. When God said love, Satan said hate. When God said forgive, Satan said hold a grudge. And so, beloved, it's the devil that wants to do just the opposite of what God wants to do in your life. So when you are trying to build your finances and build your wealth and save money and, and do things that, that you know will be good for you and for those around you and, and for charities that you want to give to and donate to and, and, and for the wonderful things you want to do in life to help other people and, and, and build bigger and better, uh, you know, uh, the devil will come and try to send people into your life to try to snatch it from you. I know what I'm talking about, beloved. Uh, and it looks like everything is coming against you all at once. Things look weird. Things look strange. Fiery darts and all kinds of wickedness. Uh, uh, ordeals are happening to you, beloved. But I uh, stop by, beloved, to remind you this morning and tell you this. Do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you. Don't be surprised by it, beloved. I want you to come with me to 1 Peter real quick. 1 Peter, the full chapter, verses 12 and 13. 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Do not be surprised. This is Peter. You know Peter. You know Peter. Loud mouth, big mouth Peter always put his foot in his mouth, always saying stuff before he even knows what he's talking about. He told Jesus, you know, uh, I'll never leave your side. I'll go to prison with you. I'll die for you. And then uh, when they took Jesus to be crucified and, the, and they pointed Peter out and said, he's one of them. I saw him with Jesus. Peter act like he didn't know who Jesus was. The same Peter, but this Peter has been anointed. This Peter is now filled with the Holy Spirit. We celebrated Pentecost Sunday this past Sunday. This Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit right here now. And so, beloved, uh, uh, Peter is saying to those believers who are being hard-pressed and, and who are being, uh, 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 you know, uh, bombarded with, with all kinds of uh, uh, sufferings and, and, and persecutions. And, and he said, do not be surprised. Don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come to you. You see, some people believe that when you're in God and when you're in Christ and, and in your, when you're trying to do what is right and you live good, you read the word, you pray, you talk to the Lord, you go to church, you try to do everything to grow and, 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 to, and, to, and to please the Lord. And some people feel like they ought not go through anything. Well, beloved, I want to remind you, the Lord never said we wouldn't go through anything. But the Lord did say, I'll be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so, beloved, just because we're in God uh, and we are, are trying to live a life, uh, a spiritual life, and to grow spiritually does not mean we're not going to go through anything. If you are a child of the Most High God, that's more of an indication that you will go through some things. Because the devil is going to come through you more, to you more. The, the devil is going to send people at you more. 
you see. But beloved, hold on. I've got something to tell you. The Lord put something on my heart. The Lord will allow things, beloved. The Lord will test you. A good teacher will test you. Uh -huh. What you've been learning for the past uh, uh, nine weeks, you're going to be tested. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be tested because what the teacher is trying to do is elevate you. Bring you from one level to the next. And we can't do that without a test. We can't do that without seeing where you are. And let you see where you are and what you need to do. Beloved, the Lord is the greatest teacher that ever existed. And so sometimes you're going to be tested. Not because God doesn't know where you are, but because you need to know where you are, beloved. And so God wants to develop us and to prepare us and get us ready for the calling the Lord has on our lives. And so sometimes the Lord will allow us to go through some things, beloved, as a test to help us to grow and move on and develop and move up to the next level. God doesn't want us to stay in the same place. Now, Ms. beloved, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that God sends these tragedies and, and sends all this suffering and sends sickness and, and disease and is trying to kill you. No, God doesn't send those things, but God will use those things that the devil does. It's the devil who does it. And God will use pe people just like the devil uses people. People that come against you, say st stupid stuff to you, talk to you, try to belittle you like you beneath them or something. I had somebody call me the other day, and I called them back to see what was going on. They wanted to talk to me about some things, and, and they wanted to talk to me like I'm beneath them. I didn't say nothing. I kept my cool. But I gave that to the Lord. I gave that situation. That ain't nothing but the devil. That ain't nothing but a bunch of foolishness. And so, beloved, listen here. I know the Lord heard that conversation. And I'm not worried about it. And so, beloved, you do the same thing. God never leaves your side. When somebody bothers you, when, when somebody comes against you, when, when somebody's plotting against you and you don't even know about it, the Lord knows about it. The Lord knows about it. And so you don't have to worry, beloved. Now, I'm not saying that the Lord sends these people or the Lord sends tragedies and hardships in your life, but the Lord will take it and turn it around and make it work for your good. Am I right or not? All things are working together. Are they not? All things. Romans 8 and 28, one of my favorites. Uh, all things are working together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are the called according to God's purpose. You see? And, 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 so, and so don't you worry, beloved, when it looks like everything is coming against you. Peter said, don't be surprised as though something strange were happening to you. He said, don't act like you don't know. Don't act like something strange is happening to you. First of all, beloved, nothing is happening to you. Don't you know that God is in control of what happens around you and in you and to you? Don't you know that nobody can do anything to you? Nobody can even condemn you. The Lord is the only one who can judge you and condemn you. Beloved, nothing is happening to you. Peter told the people who were suffering and being persecuted and going through hardship, don't be surprised as though something strange is happening to you. Why is Peter saying that? Because, beloved, nothing is happening to you. Talking to you right now today, the Lord is talking to you. Nothing is happening to you. Something is happening for you. The devil meant it to harm you, but God 
is doing it for your good. God is allowing it, not doing it to you. God is allowing it. He is allowing something. She's allowing something. Something is taking place. Nothing is happening to you. Something is taking place in your life. Something designed by Almighty Spirit, Almighty God, something that God has permitted. Nobody can do anything to you. They might be permitted. God might allow. You see, nothing is happening to you. Something is happening you. God is, is doing something. You see, watch this, watch this, beloved. Verse 13, Peter said, but rejoice. Now watch this word, in as much, I'm reading the NIV. That's what the NIV says, in as much, verse 13, Rejoice. Peter said, don't worry about it. Don't be surprised. Don't act like you don't know when you're trying to go up. Satan's going to try to bring you down. Don't be surprised that when you take uh, uh, one step forward, Satan's going to bring something to try to take you three steps backwards. Don't you be surprised by that. Don't you act like you don't know that that, that this is what's going to happen, that, that, that strange things are going to happen to you. They look strange, beloved, but they're not. It looks strange, but it's not. And Peter went on and said, God, I don't worry about that, but rejoice. Why rejoice when people come against you? See, this is what I've learned over the years when I see all of this stuff coming against me. I, I, I know what's getting ready to happen. I know. See, beloved, know when you see this, you're doing something right. You're doing something good, beloved. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back to that. i got something to say about that in a minute. I'm not going to really hold you along this morning. Believe me, I'm not. Uh, and so, uh, in as much. And what, what that means, what God is saying is there is a proportionate amount of pressure. There's a proportion God is allowing upon you as you participate in these sufferings. Because you are in Christ, and just like Christ suffered on this earth, sometimes you are going to suffer in Christ. When you have a relationship with God, beloved Satan already hates your guts. And then when you mess around and get a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, and then you start growing spiritually, beloved, guess what? Satan will hate you even more. He wants to try to make you doubt God. And so uh, Peter said, in as much, in as much, in the proportion, in, in the proportion that God is going to allow, in the proportion, in as much that God will allow to come upon you, beloved, in these sufferings. That means that God has control over it. There's a proportion. There's a proportion that God has designed, and no one and nothing can go over and beyond what God allows in your life. No one and nothing can go outside of the boundaries of that proportion. Whatever the burden might be, whatever the suffering might be. Now that's right, your mellow butt go. There is a proportion, there is an adequate amount of suffering or hardship, uh, beloved, or test that God will allow you to go through, beloved, in as much. And so, beloved, if you are suffering or going through anything this morning or, or, or at whatever time you might be watching uh, uh, this video, you will only go through the designed proportion God has ordained for your life. You got to remember, beloved, no matter what happens, God is in control. Nobody is in control of what happens to you. And yeah, I've asked God why these people called me yesterday. 
why these people called me the other day? Why, 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 why you? But I have to remember God is not trying to take anything from me, but trying to take something to me. Trying to develop me and to grow me. And let me tell you, beloved, why God does that. He does that with all of us. Let me tell you, Peter said rejoice. And I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> rejoice that you may be overjoyed when Jesus' glory is revealed. Now that's on down the road later on when, when Jesus re returns and appears to everybody. But right now, beloved, you can rejoice. Right now, today, beloved, look, when it looks like everything is coming against you all at once, uh, when things look bad, there's hardship and evil on every side. Remember, Satan is trying to take you down, but God is trying to take you up. And guess what? God is more powerful. You're going up, beloved. When you see that, you've been doing something right. You're doing something right. If the devil doesn't like it, the Lord loves it. When you see that happening, keep on doing what you're doing because you are pleasing the Lord. Whenever Satan gets mad with you like that, you are doing something right, beloved. You are pleasing Almighty God. You are doing something that God wants you to do. So don't worry. Don't worry about it. When you see the devil rear his ugly head, uh, you're doing what God loves. You can't please both. You can't please God and the devil. And so, beloved, hallelujah, uh, yes, you better confuse the devil. Rejoice because you know what's happening. You know what's happening. You can rejoice because you know what's going on. You see, the area where you struggle the most is most likely the area where God is trying to bless you. Wherever Satan keeps on bothering you, if it's in your finances, trying to make you feel like, you know, you ain't going to never get this and do that or whatever, that ain't nothing but the devil lying to you. Don't you know he's a liar? And whenever he opens his mouth, whenever he speaks, he speaks his native language. He's a liar. Uh -huh, and no truth is in him. And so, beloved, uh, whatever you see negative going backwards, going uh, in the reverse direction than where you're trying to go, that ain't nothing but the, 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 the uh, tactics and schemes of Satan lying to you. Whenever he's telling you something like that, just know, uh-uh, you're about to go forward. He's trying to make you think you're going backwards. He's trying to make you think your dreams aren't going to come true. He's not trying to make you think that you're not going to do whatever the plan is for your life. No, he's trying to lie because he's nothing but a bully. And bullies are fake. And we know that. Bullies are fake. They only try to scare you. You fight back and you watch what a bully would do. I bet you they don't bother you no more. You fight back, stand up for yourself. I bet you, uh, I bet you they don't bother you no more. I bet you. And so, beloved, uh, 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 you, 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 you remember this. When you're going through and you're struggling in, in a certain area in your life, look like every time you turn around, it's the same area. That's the area God is going to bless you. And even if it's different areas, various areas of your life, God is going to bless you. God wants us to be whole, beloved, whole, W-H-O-L-E, whole, complete. God wants us to be healthy in every area of our lives. See, and you know how you fight back, Shamila? You fight back when the devil bothers you. Don't let the devil bully you. You got power over the devil because you have the Holy Spirit. And, and, and when the devil is fighting against you with his stupid self, he's fighting against God. Look like to me, you ought to know that by now, all these thousands of years. He's fighting against God. And beloved, guess what your weapon is? The word. <laughs> you remember Jesus in the wilderness? In Matthew, the fourth chapter, when Jesus was out there fasting in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and Satan came to him, uh, testing. 
trying to test God to see if he could, you know, get God to do what he wanted him to do. Trying to get Jesus to do what he wanted him to do, you see. And Jesus, what did he do? No, it is written. The word says. The word, the word. Every time Satan brought something to him, Jesus always put the word on. Uh -uh, uh -uh, no, it is written. See. And so, uh, uh, beloved, you stand on that word. You stand on that word. That's your weapon. That's your sword. The sword of the spirit. Spiritual warfare. Your weapon is powerful, beloved. That word is the only thing that will get Satan's mind right. Uh-huh, that word. Yeah, uh-huh. You can cry. You can kick. You can have a temper tantrum. Uh, you can go and tell everybody. You can cuss. You can do whatever you want. But the only thing that's going to get Satan's mind right is the word of God. What is God saying to you in your heart? What is God saying to you in the in the scriptures? What is God saying to you in your circumstances? All of that is the word of God. Things happening around you is the word of God. If you look closely in the spirit, you'll see it. Mm -hmm. God is always speaking to us in various ways. Hallelujah. Yeah, and so beloved, uh, uh, that's our weapon. We gotta fight back the right way. This ain't no uh, uh, natural fight. This is a spiritual uh, fight. Uh, for we fight not against flesh and blood. We fight against these principalities in high places and, and these demonic spirits. See, but we are prepared. We we are prepared. See. That's right. And stay focused on what God says, Shamela. That's right. Stay focused on the Lord and what God said. Not Satan's lie, because whenever he opens his mouth, it ain't nothing but a lie. See, when you think negative things and you feel negative things, stop it. Because that ain't nothing but Satan putting that mess in your mind. Stop it. And focus on what the Lord says about that situation. Don't look at what the devil is saying. Go find out what God said about it. That's what you stay focused on right there. Think it not strange, my sisters and my brothers. Don't be surprised, beloved. Through it all, you are growing and Almighty Spirit is developing you for your purpose and your call in this earth. Don't think it's strange. Nothing is happening to you. Something is happening for you. This is normal. This is supposed to happen. If you don't have any enemies, you got to go back and check your relationship with God. Because people are not going to like you simply for having a relationship with God because the power of God rests upon you. If nothing is happening, everything is all right, and everybody just loves you and, and getting along with you, then you, you lined up with the world. You're not lined up with God. If you lined up with God, something is going to come against you. Somebody's going to come against you. That's how you know. That's how you know you're right, beloved, because you're going to have some people come against you for no reason, for nothing. Uh-huh. Yeah, sometimes we, we it's our fault. Yeah, yeah, sometimes we, you know, we fall short, beloved, but, but sometimes we have done nothing. And you know, you'll recognize it. You'll feel it in your spirit. You'll be able to discern it. You'll know. You'll know. And so, beloved, nothing is wrong. You haven't done anything wrong. No. You're doing something right. You're doing something the devil hates. And if the devil hates it, God loves it. So whatever you're doing, you keep on doing it. As long as you're pleasing the Lord. Nothing strange is happening to you. Peter said, don't think it's strange. Don't think there's something strange going on when you see all of this. This is the hand of God using your enemies to promote you in the kingdom. Using your enemies to promote you in the kingdom of God. 
on this earth. Yes. Uh huh. God just makes a fool out of Satan. That's all he does. God makes a fool out of Satan. Almighty God, Almighty Creator, our Mother, our Heavenly Mother, our Heavenly uh, Father, uh, uh, She, uh, you, you know, God, who is who is our Maker, uh, whoever you call God, God is using your enemies. They think they're harming you, but God is using them to build you up and to promote you in the kingdom. But you got to be tested. You got to go through some tests. And beloved, if you stand on the word and don't lose your faith, you'll pass every one of them with flying colors. You stand on that word, you'll pass every one. Not that everything is going to go your way. But you're going to be at peace about it, even if it doesn't. That's victory. That's victory with you. So don't you worry about it. You see things happening, people coming against you, things don't seem to be going your way. All is happening at one time and coming against you and uh, the struggles and hardships and all that, beloved. Mm -mm. Don't worry. You got a breakthrough coming around that corner. You just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. You just fight back with the word. That's all you got to do. Stand your ground. Amen. Nothing is happening to you. Something is happening for you. And you're going to be tested. Because you're going to be prepared for the next level. Amen. So don't be surprised. Hallelujah. Ain't God good? Ain't the Lord good, beloved? I know it. Oh, yes, she is. Ain't the Lord good? Glory to the Most High God. Almighty Spirit is trying to do nothing but bless you. Hallelujah. And so, beloved, I pray that this word has been a blessing to you. I hope you're feeling encouraged and inspired this morning. I hope that you know the Lord loves you and nothing happens to you uh, by circumstance. Nothing can just happen to a child of God. God is in control. Some of you who have children and grandchildren and nieces and nephews, you know, and they're with you and you're taking them out for a, a time of enjoyment or, or on an outing or something, beloved, your eye is on them everywhere they go. Nothing is just going to happen to them. When you cross the street, you're holding their hand. And if we can be parents, even auntie parents like you, even if we can be parents, you know, uh, 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 on this earth, what kind of parent do you think Almighty God can be? If we, with our human, limited, frail selves, can be good parents and care about our children, and watch over them and protect them and care for us and not just let any old thing happen to them. What about God? What kind of parent do you think God is for us? Woo, I can shout right there. <laughs> I heard somebody say last night, nobody want to hear all that hooping and hollering online. They wasn't talking about me. They, they were talking about being a Pentecostal pastor. And, you know, uh, there's a, there's some hooping going on with the Pentecostal church, you know. I'm Baptist myself. Uh, but, you know, you know, you, you hear some hooping and some hollering going on. I don't care. Don't bother me. I might be one of them sometimes, you know. Uh, but they say we are in a different era now where we are virtual. And, and, and people don't want to hear all that on Facebook. People don't hear all that hooping and hollering online on Zoom and everything. Everywhere. <laughs> Might be all right for the house, you know, for the house of prayer, but people won't hear all that online. But beloved, I tell you, that blessed my heart uh, to know 
that God is, is with us and God can care for us. Amen. So God bless you today, beloved Shamila, uh, Sister Michelle, and others who have joined. Uh, I can't see everybody uh, who's here, but look, I want to tell you, thank you for being with me. Uh, you have blessed me so by your presence. My Facebook family, YouTube family, we love you here at First Liberty Church. Amen. And so until next time, you be blessed. And remember, don't worry, ain't nothing strange happening to you. Matter of fact, it should be. Because that lets you know there's a blessing on the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so you go on and keep your head up. All right? And rejoice like Peter said. Be glad about it. Something's coming your way. It's going to bless you, beloved. Amen. And so I'll talk to you next time, beloved. 11 o'clock a.m. Sunday uh, morning, Central Standard Time for the Sunday service. So I want to see your face here in the place.